Let me turn now to Marie Kivinjemi, uh, for the first Prime Minister of Finland, as I already said, and what we are expecting from you, you have the last word, that's all, <laughs> Marie. So please, we, uh, we will benefit from your understanding of the, of the very complex and multi-layered and multi-dimensional issue that we are dealing with, please. Thank you very much, and thank you, first of all, for the invitation, so happy to be here. Again, thank you, Thierry and the organizers, uh, uh, for letting us uh, discuss this interesting theme uh, here today. And a lot has been already said, uh, and it's always difficult to be the last speaker uh, and find new angles uh, to the discussion. But a question I would like to actually answer is that uh, what did uh, COVID-19 change something? I mean, uh, did it uh, kind of mutate, uh, globalize into a certain uh, direction? And uh, actually, in, uh, it kind of did good for, for globalization, and at least it brought some new elements. And I think that the positive aspect really is that it underlined the essence of international cooperation and uh, multilateralism. It brought very high on the agenda the need for global action, like cooperation in vaccine production and delivery, and also joint measures preventing the virus uh, to, to uh, spread. And uh, it showed how dependent we are from each other. And also in that sense, uh, kind of made us all uh, see how important it's also in the future to make sure uh, that we can assure uh, the global value change to uh, to uh, function, but also it made visible that it's utmost important to uh, have a very good international cooperation, but also it so, uh, showed us some flaws uh, uh, when it comes to taking care of the uh, uh, pandemic and organizing everything. But uh, positive also is that it actually didn't trigger an increased willingness to implement unnecessary trade and trade-related protectionist measures in the area of, of goods. And Minister Park already actually uh, referred to this fact. And when you look at, for example, the report prepared uh, to the G20 countries by WTO, UNCTAD and OECD, you can see there that since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, 140 trade and trade-related measures in the area of goods had, have been implemented by G20 economies. And 72% of them were trade facilitating, uh, of trade facilitating nature and 28% uh, and only could be considered trade restrictive. But then when you look at the rollback of uh, those uh, measures, the trade facilitating measures has been the rollback of them has been swifter than the rollback of trade restricting measures. So really you have to be careful in order to, to watch what's happening. Uh, and another good example of, uh, of that uh, positive uh, progress is the tax agreement in June, where 130 tourist addictions are uh, uh, updated to international tax uh, agreement concerning multinational enterprise prices. So, uh, very good steps uh, forward have been made. But many of you already pointed out that it is challenging uh, to, to govern uh, the in international order uh, and, and really make sure uh, that uh, the rules-based international order uh, is able to uh, kind of uh, uh, manage the, the biggest challenges uh, we are facing and I think that COVID really made visible two mega trends uh, where this uh, international rules based uh, order is needed, namely digitalization and uh, climate change. So it's uh, at the most important in these areas to achieve better multilateral, multilateral governance frameworks and international uh, rules. For example, when it comes to digitalization, uh, we really have to be able to facilitate the digital transformation of our economies and, and really create effective values-based digital regulatory frameworks and state-of-the-art global standards. And uh, 
Bertrand already mentioned when it comes to, to climate change, the need for a comprehensive global carbon pricing system. That is one of the really concrete tools which we should uh, reach uh, in order to uh, 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 tackle the climate uh, change uh, by uh, the rules uh, decided uh, together at the global level. But uh, uh, it is still kind of a bit uh, disappointing and that despite the fact that we all have seen during this pandemic how important it is uh, to have deep uh, global uh, cooperation but uh, and how useful globalization uh, is that we still have uh, protectionism and populism uh, which threaten uh, to unravel kind of the decades of uh, international cooperation and openness. And I think that we really have to put people uh, in the center. And this is very much a political question, as was uh, uh, mentioned uh, uh, by Masoud earlier in, in his in intervention. So we have to look at the national level and, and the national uh, policies, policies and there is no silver bullet, and I think that we have been discussing kind of the ways how to make everyone see uh, the benefits of globalization and what kind of policies should be implemented in order to make globalization work for for all. But and I think that we have all the elements on, on board mm. already. We need more information, uh, and uh, and also we have to uh, tackle uh, the misinformation. Uh, and it's kind of alarming that in many countries you don't have <coughs> specific policies uh, introduced or, or frameworks uh, to, to guide uh, kind of the response to mis- and disinformation. Uh, so sp spreading information uh, and also tackling the misinformation are uh, those uh, tools which should be uh, used in order to kind of... Uh, uh, make everyone see uh, the benefits of, of globalization. Uh, but then, as I already said, kind of the third uh, point uh, when it comes to the recipe, how to uh, make it uh, uh, politically accepted uh, to really move forward in the global governance and also uh, making sure that the globalization uh, really uh, works uh, also uh, uh, in the future is that we have not been able in many countries to make sure that uh, the benefits of, of globalization uh, are not uh, shared equally and everyone has uh, the opportunity to participate in the society. And, and this is something uh, which uh, we really uh, have to pay attention, uh, make sure uh, that everyone ha has the access to education uh, and uh, also you need active labor market policies, uh, social protection and, and so on. Uh, I think there's uh, already uh, those uh, uh, issues mentioned many times uh, when, when it comes to kind of the recipe, how to uh, make people understand uh, the benefits of globalization and also how to make uh, the globalization uh, work uh, better uh, for all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very, very much indeed, uh, Marie, for the uh, stress you are putting on fair share of the bounties of uh, globalization as one of the major problems we have to cope with. I'm struck by the fact that when uh, I hear all, all members uh, of this panel, uh, one of the elements which they underlined was the acceleration of underlying <coughs> trends. The, the, uh, formidable amplification and acceleration uh, through all possible dimensions. And it seems to me that uh, the, the speed limit in some respect has been overpassed and our own people are saying it goes too fast. Please cool down, uh, try to uh, have a, a slower speed and we cannot. The problem is that we cannot. Anyway.